More reasons why Tesla is the next NVIDIA. Everyone hates Tesla. Nothing new. But we're going to actually continue on the last video with Hans that we didn't finish where we're talking about Tesla's NVIDIA moment is coming. All right. And let me say this to the normies once again. This is not investment advice. Do your own due diligence. Let's ride. Well, let's try jump into that right now. I don't know if I can. Is this working? Mm -hmm. Can Hard you see? see? Yes, it's, it's working. It might be a little bit of a nitro. I'll blow it up a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. but uh, let's go 150%. Now, what we did in the past is it, it's kind of a model that we can build different scenarios. You've been through this before. Let's ignore the car, the FSD, and just focus on the bot, which is down here, Optimus bot. Now, what I did was, but hopefully it's good enough. Should I turn off our cameras and just mm -hmm. focus on the spreadsheet? Mm -hmm. Is that better? Yes. Okay, blow it up a bit. All right, now we took it in the past, sir, and last time we did this, we started the bots in year two, which would take us to 2026. Now we're taking it to year one, 2025. So they're taking it to year one, 2025, and this is going to be an AI Tesla evaluation model, and they're going to be talking about the Optimus robot. I'm not sure, but they also have other things like FSD insurance and then fleet AI inference and then Robo Taxi and Fleet Media Entertainment and Apps. And they have some other things, but Mega Packs and Supercharger Network and Semi. But we're just going to focus on the AI part, right? And a lot of people in Wall Street are not building out models like this, right? Because if the price is not there, then they're just not going to speculate like this. They're not going to have any projections. And that's unfortunate, but that's completely fine. They're doing something different. So for retail investors or just you actually managing your own portfolio, it's up to you to build out these projection models to try to project and actually estimate, guesstimate, hypothesis, whatever you want to call it, and figure out what does it look like? What does a financial model look like? And this is why I'm saying if you own a hundred stocks and a trillion stocks, <laughs> you can't do this with all of your stocks, right? It's really interesting to put a certain percentage and focus on a specific individual stock. But again, O2O in general is not intended for informational or educational purposes only. And it is not investment, tax, or financial planning, legal, or real estate advice. Just got to say that because we just got to watch out. Now, let's continue. With 10,000 bots a year. So maybe we should revise it down to 1,000. Mm -hmm. And then we, we can do a step change of 1,000% growth every year or 1,000% is a step change of so 10,000 to 100,000, et cetera, on mm -hmm. and on and then modify the growth rate adjustment down by a percentage. And then we have the price per unit. Now, it, I don't have the ability to do leasing or pricing. We can just do kind of price per unit, margin per unit, profit margin 50,000. So if we sell them for 30,000 a pop, Tesla makes $15,000. That profit margin could be a lot higher, especially as we go a la carte with features and functionalities that we add later. And then it'll project out the stock price so if we go to the export. So I like this. And also he was very conservative. He kept it at 50, which I think is a good number, especially initially with like, let's say it's third gen or fifth gen after the certain types of generation comes out and the product continues to ramp up, then the prices will change and the margins will change for sure. But at the end of the day, this is a good basis to start with. Just be conservative. Software margins is around 60, et cetera. But if we go 50, this is pretty good. We can go to stock price here, and then we can see exactly the size of the bot impact over time. So that's kind of how this works. But what I want to do is mine your minds right now on how this could work. We'll do kind of a expected case, bear case, bull case scenario. So 2025, do you think Tesla could ship bots? If we want to be conservative, I think 1,000. Uh, 1,000. And then annual growth rate adjustment. If we have a thousand percent growth, that means if we go out here to 2026, that'll take us to bots. So we go from a thousand right. to 10,500 mm -hmm. to 110,000. Mm -hmm. And then year three, year four, we'll go to 1.15 million in 2028. Yeah. Now, per the smoke away, he had 10 million exactly. in 2028. And then we get to 12 million bots in 2029. Yeah. yeah. So if we go about 1 million versus 10 million from this other person, I think that's super conservative. That's good. I would rather go there versus than going to the hill, going to the bull. 127 million, 2030. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we yeah. agree on that. Everybody's on the same page. The, the jump from year five to year six from 12 million to 120 million might, might yeah. be a good stretch in that, in that single year. But 
I wouldn't think so, right? So that's that's uh, why why is that a big stretch, sir? What year is it again? How many years from now? Twenty six to twenty twenty seven. We're going to go from uh, one million yeah. to twelve million in twenty twenty nine. Yeah. So twenty twenty eight to twenty twenty nine, big jump. Again, I don't see that as a huge leap, but you're saying because let's say the cars, how many cars can you make? In a yeah, year? No, I'm sorry. I'm saying from from there, from twelve million up to then the next year, I think is one hundred and twenty some million. Mm-hmm. Is that, is that right, James? Yep. What's what's your? It say? goes from at uh, twenty twenty eight. We have one point one five million. Yeah, I think it's a stretch too. But let's just walk through with these guys. I think it's very interesting. I do believe it's a stretch, especially from uh, what did he say twenty twenty seven to twenty twenty. Like, come on now. To ten x the previous year. Um, but that's you know they've got plenty of time to scale up production that's, between now and twenty thirty. Yeah, that's my point. And again, so, if they if they can spit out. What did I calculate? They're spitting out cyber trucks now every 40 seconds, assuming a 40 hour work week. <laughs> and that's a very complex piece of machinery. Yeah. Um, it's possible they can do it with bots. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So the bots, and, and when you compare it to the cyber truck, I mean, definitely every 40 seconds. And even if we go to the power wall, which is every 25 seconds, let's take a more complicated device like the cyber truck, still, damn. 45 seconds, so that's pretty amazing. And then when you compare it to a power wall, which is more simplistic, but then at the end of the day, that's 25 seconds, then I could possibly see how they think that, but I just would like to be more conservative. Okay, average sales price per unit. Let's, let's, just, let's just try anchor in. Especially when something hasn't even came out yet. Like, this is the first time, right? Like, there's been robots before, but there hasn't been scale robots. Like, besides that weird thing in China where the robot, like, is in the Kama Sutra and it flips out and then it, and it breaks the walnut and then pops open a Coca-Cola recklessly and then all the drink get over you. <laughs> and they're like, man, this is a robot that's going to be Tesla. We hate Tesla so much. We've been to say that this robot that could do, co co what is it, contra to <laughs> that could bend like a pretzel and then come out of a pretzel and then it could break a walnut recklessly and pop open up the top of a Coca-Cola bottle and spill all the Coca-Cola out. Yeah, man, that's better. I mean, come on, man. In on 2029, conservatively, because that will match the ARC time frame as well. Mm -hmm. Okay? So well, average... It's not so much the price for me, but your profit margin, that leaves $15,000 per bot in profit. Yep. Um, that, for me, doesn't sound crazy, although what I'm talking about is $15,000 per year per exactly. bot. All right, cool. We're going to have to just wait for a bit. There's always some commercial. Nobody wants to escape. Nobody wants to real estate. Exactly. Uh, sale. Yep. Uh -huh. Which we right. don't model here. No, yeah. just modeling sales. So I, I don't know how you want to adjust for that here. Um, well, we could say if, if we agree with the amount of value of lease per year and assuming the life of the bot is three years. Exactly. That's that's a that's a nice little tiny compromise that's still very conservative. Just modeling three years worth of profit. So we put a 90,000 here for giggle. So they're going to keep modeling it out. And what I want to just show you guys, if you're really looking, is that uh, retail investors, we create our own models and we work with the models and we project years out. And so I'm not just saying recklessly invest, but just deep dive into a company and deep dive into their products and services so that you can understand, hey, let me project where they're going. And if they go in this direction, then that will allow me to understand, is the price going to be higher of the stock or lower? Now, again, we're not really always focused on the price day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out. Like we have to just focus on what's the business here. And there's so many people that I constantly talk to and they're never talking about the business of Tesla. They're always talking about this price. Like they can't even mention a product besides the car. And that's a problem. 10 million vehicles and you should be able to make 33 million bucks. Well, yeah, actually go. on that one, sir, and if you look here at the numbers, we're doing 6.8 million run rate in 2029. And that's mm -hmm. heavily sandbagged. So we're doing 7 million cars and only 12 million bots. So that's... Seven million cars is two hundred and thirty-three million bottle coolants. Yeah, yeah, that's it's why I wasn't so concerned about your one twenty-seven jump. But anyways, yeah. the point being that even if you take a twelve million, he threw a shot back at him. <laughs> Three dollars uh, per share. What is the market cap of that? Forty-one trillion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which, okay, which is ten trillion higher than uh, what we had. And if it's forty-one trillion after trillion. that, then guys, just scale it back a lot. Thirty trillion target by twenty. Well, we they didn't talk about when. The 30 trillion would happen. Arc did, you know, five to eight trillion 
by 2029. So we have that as a benchmark, but I do believe. Dang, 2029, 8 trillion. All right, expense value for Tesla in 2029 to be 2,600 per share. I would love to see that day, but more so than the share price, I would love to see a Tesla creates those streams of revenue for the company and definitely have high profits. I would love to see that. And I, I think we got something here when it comes down to Optimus and when it comes down to FSD, real world artificial intelligence. Value and a lot more units in the bots. I think, no, the reason why, didn't they say that the reason why we did not add the bots in this analysis is because it, the numbers get nutty. They purposely, nutty. they're probably going to do, and I know that they are researching the bots and separately, they'll probably come up with its own analysis for that. It, they, this is really focused on RoboTaxi and they want to just keep it clean. So I yeah, I think you, you run into JIP scaling and actuator scaling limits, probably yeah. relatively, you know, th that's going to be the the main yeah, that's going to be the main issue because the actual, wait, actual relators, actual, whatever, man, that is being created by Elon and that's cre being created by Tesla because the actual waiters in the marketplace are just not good enough for the robots. Challenges that they're going to have to overcome. And on that time frame, I think it will also like because they can make that many of them there, you know, there definitely is a business case to go ahead and make them even if they're not all fully useful yet. But the the ceiling on how useful you can make these bots based on the quality of the AI over that period of time, I know that Elon is extremely optimistic on the capabilities of AI over the next five years. Um, I am less optimistic than he is on that. And I think that just conservatively, it's highly likely that we won't have bots that are smart enough to be useful in the hundreds of millions of units on that time frame. Uh, because the quality of the AI is good, but not necessarily that good. Um, but that could also be not the case. And so that's one of those wild card factors in all of this that makes it hard to have confidence in numbers like that, even though the the physical complexity is definitely within the realm of, of feasibility. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Now, basically what I was just saying is when it came down to the hardware, that it, it could be done. Like Tesla is very good at manufacturing whether it's EVs or whether it's batteries. I mean, we've proven our ability to build out not only the facility, but ramp the product. I mean, we've proved our ability to do that. And especially when it comes down to the new assembly line that's gonna be for the 25K vehicle. I mean, how to reduce costs and make the process more effective and efficient, the mega casting. I mean, everywhere you look left and right, it's just a ridiculous IP that you see everywhere from even just the refinery that's going to be built, the lithium ion refinery factory down in Texas, that's going to be amazing too. It just goes to show that the processes and the systems that are established by Tesla is just bar none. No one else can keep up. Now, going back to this, of course, the robots hardware will be easy. Now, the software, that's going to be a little bit difficult and different. So when it comes down to applying that many robots to the market, I mean, if the software is not up to speed, then you might not need that many of the hard, that much of the hardware. And as you can see, just running in the back, we can see the evolution from Bumblebee all the way up into what we have today. And this was September 2022, then Gen 1, March 2023. And then now we have this robot in this model. And we're coming along pretty far and pretty fast. But one of the things I just want to point out is that these robots are built to mass produce, unlike Boston Dynamics, unlike other things that you have seen, those companies even building out those robots don't have the IP, intellectual property, to build out these robots as well, as effective and as efficient as Tesla. We always kill them softly with the manufacturing. Okay, it's the most advanced manufacturing facility on the planet something that China would not deny. This is high level manufacturing when it comes down to what Tesla does. And it beats all of the automotive companies, period, whether they're making EVs or ICE vehicles, their processes and their systems to make these products are just more effective and efficient. And as you can see, we got the hands movement. We got here, tactile sensing, of the eggs, we we can kind of understand with the sensors how delicate we need to handle the egg. 
as that robot switches over. You got him crip walking throughout the actual facility with the cyber trucks in the background. So you can see progress coming along. And let me show you this before we hit out just on the back end. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. The actual robot already being inside a factory. Now, this is just a training grounds, okay? This is not the actual factory. They're not in there yet. I think Elon said there's like one or two, but this is the greatest gift that we have because unlike Boston Dynamics and other companies, we have the factories. We could put these robots not only just in virtual training models, but we could put them in the physical real world training model, um, excuse me, modules and situations, which is exercise and get those case studies and watch the AI learn from real world change. And unlike other companies, let's say you do have a robot and you want to put it in an actual factory, you're going to have to reach an agreement with the company and the factory you're putting it in. And then the factory might not want to change the floor style and things to be altered so that your robot can function a little bit more better, have optimization in its process. Maybe you need to change something in the environment. So you have to go back to the drawing board and you can't delay the process of the real business that that factory is. Like, come on, the factory's really doing business. And now you have a robot from another company. It's like, oh, we need to do some training. We just need to actually work out some kinks. Let us use your factory. I'll reach an agreement. And so Tesla owns the factory already. And they can make the changes they need to make and they actually build out the factory. So therefore, it will be easier to adjust when they need to adjust. Guys, that's enough. I don't want this to be too long. This was a lot of information, but we got all the information. You've seen the actual modules, the actual projections that people have. I can't wait until ARK Invest actually does the same type of model so we can see what their numbers look like and compare it to those numbers and then kind of get to understand. Now, they said 41 trillion. Let me just leave it at 10 trillion. So if we're reaching 10 trillion with actual Tesla, then that's what we have to say at the end of the day. Elon for the win. Everyone hates Tesla and there's just more and more reasons why to love it. But I guess people are going to be people and they're going to do what they're going to do. So everyone hates Tesla. I see you guys on the next one. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you guys can get all this good information as we deep dive into Tesla.